He said, let's go. So let us start. We have now next presenter, Alexander Chistako. He will speak about own performance analyzing analysis again, gathering and visualization frame graphs. Uh, can you hear me in the microphone? Yes, through the microphone. All right, I work in a data art company for the fourth time in my life. Uh, I come back to you with the presentation. I'm probably champion of the company in the number of presentations. I uh, briefly speak about myself. My uh, position is a senior software developer. I deal with development of different software for the last 18 years. And uh, I also do research uh, at International Laboratory in the uh, Institute of Fine Mechanics and Optics uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, I also am known as a DevOps uh, engineer and last uh, four years at least I I am DevOps engineer, and uh, when people meet me, uh, people want to greet me as a DevOps and probably have questions, but I try to hide because I not really consider myself a DevOps in the full scope uh, because I have other uh, functional interests. I have presentations for you with a lot of bullets. I'll speak about optimization of performance. It's quite simple, uh, as simple as to draw an all. Uh, that you see here, the owl, you just uh, draw two circles and then the rest is very easy. So optimization of productivity in Linux is also quite simple. Have you heard there's such notion as a comfort zone? Who heard about comfort zone? Everyone knows about that. Who knows? Uh, who was uh, writing once uh, at least a Perl language, using Perl language? Then you should know more about uh, comfort zone. It, what is important is to go sometimes out of the comfort zone to learn some new things. I remember the joke about the uh, comfort zone. What What is comfort zone as uh, in business training, business coaching, when a person sitting in California explaining somebody sitting in Magadan that he has to go out of zone of comfort, which is the whole Magadan is out of comfort. Uh, well, uh, I... Uh, came out of the zone of comfort tonight, actually. The stars were placed probably in that way, that the presentation will be done uh, successfully. And my presentation um, was not successful before the way I wanted it, but I know how to change it so that it's uh, better. Uh, I, If I knew that, I would just use different uh, template in uh, data art. But uh, I unfortunately chose a different uh, template. Uh, Tech is a, a template maker. And so I did it in that uh, Tech uh, text, um, template, template, this presentation. You can easily uh, save your results. I don't like uh, to include much uh, pictures in my slides. I like text more. And I don't like to listen and to watch. You are watching me while I'm speaking. I would rather recommend that you look uh, on to text. And uh, nevertheless, I include quite a lot of bullets, as you see, because I'm not ready to go out that much uh, from the zone of comfort to even reject the bullets that I love very much. And nevertheless, I uh, step out of the zone of comfort and go back. So who of you visited Linux Peter in 2015? If you visited, attended, you probably remember I showed also that slide in that presentation. I stole it from Brandon Gregg. Who knows uh, who Brandon Gregg is? Do you know there is Dima Yemenov in Penza, who is uh, also a Firebird SQL database. They are very similar looking uh, if you take the face with uh, uh, Gregory. And it's probably Russian Gregg. Gregory, he's a good engineer, so the good engineer should look like uh, Gordon Gregg. Uh, unfortunately, myself, I don't look like him at all. My probably, uh, uh, but this uh, picture looked like this in 2015. A very chaotic picture with a lot of arrows, a lot of squares. It is uh, supposed to be 
reflecting Linux system and lots of tools there and myself on the right of that picture and normal face somebody who looks at that in 2016 Brandon Gregg one month ago actually he said observable tools reached the trace level as Solaris was in the trace when it was first uh, invented uh, in fewer arrows now as you see now on the slide because if uh, the arrows are too many too multiple it is frightening but notice the picture is still quite uh, cool and there are a lot of uh, options uh, that you could uh, see in the picture but notice this is an important stage in observability tools development that uh, the inventor already in detail described in a, in a book even, and he said that in Linux we can do all that uh, in uh, four or nine uh, kernel, which will happen soon, maybe in uh, the next spring. Uh, so soon we'll have uh, kernel four nine. That is the big step for mankind. But. Uh, I describe myself here on this slide as a as a cat uh, behind the person, and uh, they say, "Okay, you are a cat behind that person. Who is this person?" Shown on the. I have now to narrow my scope of presentation, so I will focus on Linux in this presentation and demo application because uh, by my age I'm no longer a hipster, part of a hipster community, a member of that. I still would like to remain a uh, human, and I uh, try to keep um, updated on web application and other. Uh, you can uh, uh, access that website through even any smartphone now. I had a different smartphone. I used to do that. Web application uh, collects different flame graphs and visualizes uh, frame for flame graphs. And what is flame graph, you might ask? Those who attended 2015 conference, uh, you have seen this slide, among others, which uh, explains, uh, shows a flame graph, which I assembled at that time. What is shown here? I try to describe in words to you, and you please try to understand. One year ago, we uh, managed that. So flame graph is two-dimensional graph. You have stack uh, call, C stack. One function calls a different function several times, final number of times, because the indefinite number of times would not fit into the picture. So you can take, you can do simplification of that. With certain sequence, you can record those stacks from your processor and store it somewhere in a circular buffer somewhere in your kernel as Detrace de does it, ABP does it now, finally. But no mind, it uh, doesn't matter where you store it. The thing is that you collected quite a lot of those. And after equal intervals of time, you see what the program is busy with at your processor. You see uh, good data for profiling of your uh, program. That's statistically a reliable information of what is happening, what is executed at the processor uh, most of the time. This raw information you need just to visualize, visualize so that it's uh, attractive looking, clear to understand looking at the picture. You say that we have some common uh, uh, root, and CC is a function called main, and that calls everyone else. And when it calls everyone else, the stacks keep uh, growing in a certain direction. I hope that, uh, as far as I remember, from top to bottom they grow. I was uh, too proud a while ago that I know exactly where a stack grows from and to, from top to bottom. But nevertheless, never mind. We have a common root, and we have uh, a possibility to call the uh, function, and then uh, accum uh, accumulate those and uh, uh, deposit that along the axis X uh, to represent what is happening in cumulative uh, form on the processor in milliseconds or tucks, but not in that, rather in percentage. How much that function happens, um, takes place in our sample. 
and uh, y axis shows the depth of uh, each coal. Uh, we get as a result like uh, rocks uh, from Avatar movie or something. And uh, colors do not mean anything in this picture that you see. Uh, they just uh, used to uh, be able to distinguish one bar from uh, next from the next bar, and also there are function names written. If your program with debug information is assembled, uh, then looking at this name, you can identify what is more often happening on your processor. Uh, and ask yourself this question or developer and why this particular function plays so long on that processor so often. So who of you understands now what is flame graph? Well, I understand like, like last year, uh, some people do keep track of what I'm saying. I think I understand what is flame graph. Nikolai, who just departed to Moscow, who was uh, presenting before myself, uh, before the person that was before me. And uh, it's difficult, nevertheless, to explain what is flame graph, although he understands this quite nicely. Flame graph for five years old, a very simplified explanation. So uh, Y axis here shows the uh, uh, depth of uh, calls on functions is replaced with different. So x axis shows relative time. In other words, uh, a little bit uh, difficult to understand definitions. I hope you you understand. Th th this is not spoken in the microphone. Yes, because they are in line. Yes, they are in line first and then compiled. But maybe we can ask also not to inline that compiler. But it will be looking even more strange. So assembly of uh, fr flame graphs in 2015 was quite simple. Yeah, picture you remember. Uh, there are different methods uh, possible to use to do that assembly. And we want to load processor as little as possible, not overload it. And uh, we sample this in production. Otherwise, it would not be interesting because in production, different interesting things happen, and we want to know it from production. What has happened? Where's the um, bottleneck or overload? And more than 1,000 uh, requests per second. Who here has that many requests from time to time? There are. Which doesn't matter which request. There are people who have many requests per second. Not uh, even, it uh, doesn't matter even how many, but uh, anyway, some requests are handled more often by a professor. You want to know what it is. You need to do profiling. And the easiest way to take uh, stack frames from production and analyze them. And the easiest way to analyze them is to visualize them. Uh, like, uh, please show me stack frames for the last four minutes. And this is the, exactly the application that I described to you that uh, does exactly that. Stack frames are collected with certain difficulty normally because program, besides doing what we try to trace, the processor does also some input output besides that. And uh, we have to uh, use framework um, perm events, events uh, to see what is really happening in processor when the program is waiting for input output and not doing process and it is difficult to catch it is possible to catch it but you should be careful doing that because in uh, uh, idle status or sleep status the program can be uh, can find itself more often than uh, during the instances that you sample when it does processing so my program take samples of what is happening in processor. I do not include the uh, periods where the system waits for input output. That is why frame graphs are not that simple. About the zone of comfort. You know, this summer I went 
I probably have even the same color. A traveler has to have good boots. Uh, uh, so I was uh, not wearing appropriate uh, shoes and I was uh, complaining about that. I went to a shop and bought myself good trucking boots. I still wear them. They're very comfortable. Rain or mud doesn't matter. I just uh, feel very comfortable in those boots. This is about zone of comfort. A person ought to achieve good results should have good tools, equipment. And we need a uh, good uh, language to write anything uh, for programming purposes. Infrastructure code, for example. I opened a page and show it to you now from Wikipedia. This is a list of uh, programming languages. For forefathers. Those are forefathers listed. The languages are even more multiple. A huge, actually, number of languages. And we had to select. How the elections are conducted, we know, looking at this picture. There should be at least two candidates uh, running. Uh, there should be a campaign, voting campaign, right? There should be some wild lisp. Homo homoiconicity is a, your program can operate with data, you can treat your code as data. So the program is written the same type as then abstract syntactic uh, tree with look like Lisp uh, uh, all homoiconic. Uh, and that's why in Lisp it's uh, very easy to do normal macros. Who you see? to write code. You uh, did macros too. If you've seen ever macros in C, that is how macros should not be written. That is probably a uh, punishment for our sins that uh, like uh, shoes I used to wear before I bought those new. Macros are uh, used and then they change the abstract tree and nothing else happens beyond that macros. Nothing is blown. It's like a butterfly effect. When you change something macros in one place and uh, somewhere else there is an eruption of a volcano or memory shoots itself, which doesn't normally happen. Uh, optionally, immutability. I am listing uh, properties. They are the characteristic for functional languages of programming, imperative, because I like functional languages of programming, because they allow to uh, make uh, fewer mistakes, avoid mistakes. And uh, if I cannot uh, reassign value for a uh, variable, uh, then I do not have that many variables, and uh, I am less likely to make a mistake. Functions as a first-class citizen functions that uh, we can do call computation. It's uh, also part of this function language. That also is in included in the LISP. Second candidate is necessary. As you see, which language is used currently for infrastructural coding? Goland, right? Python and others, I don't have to go to GitHub because I know the answer. Why Golang, a quite democratic candidate, Golang like Hillary Clinton knows how to deal with those emails. For nine months, I was writing on Golang. I trusted that language. First, I see what people are writing on it. It's quite cool. It's possible to use, uh, possible to write. Started writing on it, but well, actually, I'm very much disappointed. I dislike many things. It's uh, difficult for me even to rationalize why. It gives me the creeps. Why not go long? Because uh, lots of changes are there. Go long uh, has got the ideas of from 1970s, maybe. Really, Go Lang dates back to those ideas of 1970s. 
40 years have passed ever since. Their languages changed drastically. Uh, the languages of uh, originated from Rus, yes, all gold, carbol, and others. And instead of taking lisps and using them, uh, those guys uh, have come up with something over sophisticated. And this is out of the 1970s, this Golang thing. And lisp is different. But it's uh, Golang is not func functional enough. Uh, as soon as I wrote lamb in the lamb in the project, uh, actually the project had uh, ordered me to get rid of that. He doesn't make people to write normal protocols that go long. Uh, like it's like uh, PHP early Java trying to get into that niche. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be bad to our colleagues, but each one of us have got colleague. We would like to somehow ostracize uh, or just to brand him as the wrongdoer. Gulang is for cheap labor force, something like that. I don't want to associate myself with that. Because I'd been around, I know the score, I've seen it repeatedly, but nonetheless, apart from language, runtime is very important, on which everything will be executed after you launch it. Language should be good or acceptable, and there is also runtime environment and libraries, Libza. I think that if we are making an infrastructural thing, there should be very good uh, Mm, I'll think Go Lang is the pioneer along those lines. Actually, uh, static link is quite good. Uh, actually, uh, you can use the binaries in the machine. Good garbage collector is also very important. And decent garbage collector is a must. Yeah, because some apps can generate a lot of short-lived garbage, you can get rid of it in no time. And actually, the resulting, fi resulting files should not be too big. Otherwise, it would be a shame. I think that out of all those things, uh, we can select the criteria which would be measurable, because I like numerical things and measurable things. Uh, lisps. OK, I know two lisps. There are more than that, but major lisps are only two. I show them. Here it's a uh, local lisp. There is an animated cartoon about that kind of lisp. So there is a common lisp and a scheme. I started from common lisp, lisp uh, 30 megabyte. It's statically linked file after compilation is over 30 megabyte. And I decided that I'm not able to come up with something big with that. 30 megabyte. Go long does around 8 megabyte. Not much. I've got 30 megabyte on the machine, but I want to have more. I would like to have a killer uh, offer, killer application. So I've opted for schema. Those who were writing schema, uh, they wanted to teach others to program, and they've come up with several standards. When they were working with the standards, they announced that the design will be minimalistic. It's so over minimalistic, so it's not possible to write anything on it. There are lots of implementations supporting different parts of the standard. There are compilers, transpilers, but everything is so muddled up. Quite unclear. I failed. Uh, so no boots then. And then it crossed my mind that we can grab everything out of Lisp, but get rid of Lisp itself. That happens sometimes. 
was a language which is called Nim. Nim to the rescue, it used to be called Nimard. Uh, two guys are writing this language in their uh, after office hours, after hours. Uh, it's very good. Nim is great. There is a good book, JavaScript, and pictures about that. The sword is uh, depicted uh, with a very sharp blade and sharp handle by the same token. So I decided that we should write down, down this uh, name as uh, strong typing is a must. Uh, without strong typing, we cannot go anywhere. It's JavaScript, it's PHP. I'm C++. Plus plus. Uh, well, I see. I was. Uh, it's just uh, portable uh, server. C++ plus plus is just one. Alexander Stepanov was writing his tale. He was running high fever, and he was a mathematician running high fever. He was almost psychedelic. And PHP script is like animated cartoon. It's hilarious. I could show how typing works in those both languages, but you would roll up and roll down with laughter. Typing should be strong by all means, and it should be static because static deposition uh, makes us avoiding many mistakes at the level of the compilation of your binaries. Compiler will check through the compliance with the types. That slightly reduces your ability to write bad code rapidly, but it increases uh, quality. The notorious homo-iconicity. Homo-iconicity enables us to implement maker system in a good way. It's all in the name, although name is not Lisp. And it's and immutability is also there, and it's possible to disconnect it. It's, it's a fabulous language. And there are al algebraic or uh, types of data, and actuarian data, but I'm not well sort uh, worse than them. And there are templates Golang doesn't have. It. Guys are searching high low for uh, templates. In Java, uh, they're called generics. The founding fathers of Golang say, no way you will not have any templates, period. So, NIM runtime. NIM is compiled into C language. It uses C language as the intermediate representation, which enables you first to make C code and then to visit any GCC or CLN platform. As in our language, there are two languages. Uh, it's per thread, GC. Each thread has got its own garbage collector. That's fabulous. That's the way name has it, and our language has it. In Java and Go language, it's totally different. Uh, you never collect big chunks unless you have identified very high gigabytes of memory in one thread. Uh, so uh, statically linked uh, files, it's about slightly more or less one megabyte uh, versus uh, uh, 30 megabyte. Uh, this is statically linked uh, file having HPC server answering the questions. Uh, and just uh, not stripped. It's a very good runtime, I think, for language uh, dealt by just by a handful of guys. Now, my project, Project Caldor, uh, it means it has got about 40 commitments at ha We have to write the project is called Caldor, which means cold. Why is that? Get outdoors and you'll understand. My colleague has a tradition of using this variant language. I decided to introduce that tradition. This is the repository you can see here. There is the live installation of all that. 
that's the address. The interface is awful. It's horrendous, and I mean it. I have got some ideas how to improve it, but I'd better outsource this. And there is a to-do list at GitHub, and there is the issues list on GitHub, and I'll have to deal with Git list uh, to enhance the uh, safety to, uh, for the binary network from the root. Uh, and I don't want to, to reiterate that. Please don't bring it up to me anymore, because I know how to deal with that. I invite you to join up with that, because actually flame graphs could be uh, seen here in the processor. There's the swiper. He wakes, it wakes up and thinks that maybe we sh I should get out of this swap. There are two Prometheus containers uh, just going around here. You don't have to pull out anything from the swamp because the machine uh, doesn't have anything else in it. Most part of my flame growth is a sort of a sleeping one. Which plans for development do I have? I would like to have not just on CPU and those flame graphs, uh, but also those which are sitting on input-output. I would like to make filtration on flame graphs uh, and uh, to make flame graphs on uh, Biden uh, programming language because uh, Actually, Peter Point Spring will happen. We'll have to tell people how to profile projects. And we have got a special pool written in Uber for, uh, in Uber, uh, for flame graphs. It needs similar apps to be written. And also, we can use it on winter bootstrap. And we can do it bootstrapping so we'll arrive at very fancy things. No microphone is used from the hall. Uh, well, the ability to write infrastructural things on dynamical uh, type type uh, typology languages, I strongly doubt it. Python, well, yes, I heard about it. Static uh, typing in Python. It's meditation, levitation, and maybe a great mourning over something like sobbing over the world in its movement forward um, consists of small steps. I made a few small steps forward. Join up with me. I'll be developing slowly. I'll be advancing slowly. Because if you use things which is not uh, so sophisticated and uh, developed enough, uh, that would not be gratifying for you. I should enhance those machines and processes first. My conclusions, uh, it's very pleasant and very easy to write pre presentations and demos in text. Text is great. Before that, for four whole years, uh, I was beating about the bush instead of using this wonderful language, uh, despite the fact that actually the command is less than in WinStack. And there is a very small team writing that, but it's wonderful language. Uh, it's was a bizarre concurrency model it has, uh, but I understood everything. It's rather easy, and I guessed uh, the way it should be. So it's a very concise language. Uh, name is great too, and uh, flame graphs are great, and Linux is great, and open source projects are great, and I'm working on all that. Flame graphs, well, uh, they are cool, like I said, because they are concise and visualizing everything which goes on to profile in very good way, which happens before your very eyes, especially if your application 
in the written on C++ in this language, let's say everything is compiled with the back symbols, mainly distributors have got these back symbols ability, so you can uh, sort out what you what exactly your processor is doing. At least, at least I can, and I call upon you. You should figure it out as well. And I told you Linux is great. Linux, nothing but Linux. Linux, Peter, yes. Windows, Peter, have you seen anything like that? Or Solaris, Peter, for that matter? No, it's Linux, Peter. IX, Peter, yes. Linux, Peter. Open source. It's good. Enab actually, enable something, but actually, I work a lot in GitHub. You may join up with me. I try to join up with others to get connected, but they want me to sign CLAs with them. They are bureaucrats, them lousy bureaucrats. I don't need anything from you. Okay, guys, just take it from me. And uh, actually, later on, if you are going to copyright your own code like that, you'll surprise me no end. And I'll have to rewrite the same thing, and then we'll go different ways. You'll go right, I'll go left. Questions, please. Well, I might ask uh, myself questions, but it's better if you ask me questions. No microphone is used. Questions? Uh, could you show us your system, the way it looks like? Let's try I need a PC with computer. If it's a notebook with internet, I'll try to show you. It looks like uh, the web side look like well, the demo is not yet ready, and I tell you that about 10 minutes from in about 10 minutes from now, we'll finally uh, an official close of the conference. So hang on. Do we have internet here? Well, it's not the wonderful operational system. Maybe I don't know how to uh, just connect it. Maybe there is an adapter someplace here. Point of fact. Maybe it is. There are so many flame graphs there, so I'm afraid that there will be something like a short circuit. Because uh, it uh, went on working like that for several days, and it's about 2,600 daily. That's a lot. First of all, thank you very much. Indeed. Everything is cool. I am trying different languages as well. Now, uh, about three days ago, I tried Dart. Well, yes, we're doing the same thing, you and me. Open source, that's cool. Could you show a code on NIM? Of course. <laughs> Who was writing on Turbo Pascal? Well, I'm going to show you, you'll see familiar ones. On Turbo Pascal, actually, uh, I don't like to write on Turbo Pascal. I write to, I like to write on NIMA, but not on, uh, on NIMA, but not on Turbo Pascal. That's it. Well, that's the code on NIMA. <laughs> it's such a Pascal, which is Python. Yes, you're, you're right, yes. That's where immutability is, exactly. That's what I'm showing you now. Very good language. At least uh, the authors have to uh, optimize it. They have a collection of uh, uh, finances for that, at least $10. Uh, when they accumulate, they would uh, probably optimize that. This is not a uh, gauche topic. This, uh, everything is OK. There was uh, acceptance. 
There is everything there. There is a very good picture where this uh, gauche mascot uh, shown and a human comes to and says, oh, so cute, a piece of a uh, mascot in a cloud that is shown in the he says, no, no, it's retarded. Oh, yes, Maxine, you can. Well, you need to pay. You don't need to pay. You're grown up. Uh, this is not spoken into the microphone. Yes, yes, correct. You can write what it uh, should be throwing out. There are programs. That is eclectic, uh, very eclectic language. There are actually four languages inside, mixed up, and specification and uh, exclusions. Child acceptance is as in Java. It, it is there, yes. It is nice to write in. Uh, different people find it uh, convenient. Everything you need, uh, I don't know why the net is down. We'll have to clarify that. Well, there is echo, right? There is echo. I didn't know that there is echo. That's why I uh, used something else instead. Oh, I don't see that. I probably deleted it. Uh, in other commits, preceding commits, I can check. List of commits. Here. Unfortunately, demonstration doesn't work. The interface is of 1996, quite old. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, that is what I did. Right into a CDR so that it will work. Put it trace, I have a question. 4.9 will have support of D-Trace. A full analog a tracer, yes. 4.9 would add time sampling. Uh, folding of stack traces would be possible to do just inside MPP. Uh, full support, the same language. No, no, not the same language. Uh, language is copyrighted. Uh, the language should be different, and it is currently being, being written, being developed uh, com mm, complete set has been prepared uh, but inside everything is different language is more complex a virtual machine is there it, it executes a code but the language is completely different from you we can hear an opinion why Haskin and Rice didn't uh, uh, Around for president. Well, I know a, a, a friend who write, writes in Haskell, and I was selecting language. Uh, he said to me, no matter which language you will choose, you would write in Haskell anyway. I remember this, and uh, uh, I think that I will always find time to uh, study Haskell. You know, you always want to play around before you marry. It's the same here. Uh, the same friend told me something like this. Uh, uh, I know, I looked at that language, and I'm too silly for that. And if he is too silly for that language, I'm even more silly for that language, not for me. Uh, I need to play around before I marry. Uh, but there are more experienced people here who can answer this. OK, if there are no questions anymore, then we thank the speaker. I have a channel in Telegram. You can subscribe. This is now fashionable.